love you. Love you, love you. Mm -hmm. We're ready. All right, get cooking. Ladies talk. first. Get talking. Ladies this is first. Rice. So, Granddad, what'd you make? Curry um, lamb. Lamb curry. Mm. Nice. That's the same. Ah, it smells delicious. Yep. Thank you. Thank you. Granddad. Thank you. Uh, this is the next third is up. Lamb curry. Oh my god, look at that. This guy, amazing cook. Give you some lamb. Yeah. So granddad, can you tell me exactly what you did to make this? How did you do it? Just the normal business. Beef, potato, mm -hmm. curry powder, onions, tomato, garlic, mm. coriander, mm -hmm. salt. And that's the business. That's the business. That's no the black pepper? You didn't put any black pepper? Black Sorry. pepper, no. You use ordinary um, <coughs> hot pepper. You use the, the real hot the real. pepper sauce. The no, Chinese hot pepper. No, no hot pepper. No sauce. The real natural pepper. Oh, the natural pepper. Yeah, yeah. What we call a scotch bonnet pepper. What do you call it? Scotch bonnet. That's the name. That's, that's the, the name. name? Yeah, then my shoulders call it. Those are really hot. You okay. use the whole one? Yeah, so what was it? Well, you took the seeds out though, didn't you? I thought I saw I, cooking the seeds. Seeds. I know you like you like to cook with a lot of heat. Yeah, it is enough for that. Oh, this, <laughs> this is very tasty. Yes, well, here we go now. So do you have a special curry powder that you use or you just... Madras. Huh? Madras curry. Madras curry, right. Mm -hmm. And that's like, that's a blend of turmeric and coriander cumin. Curry, yeah. It's a lot of different. You have some on? I have, thank you. All right, here we go. Mmm. Mm. Mm. It's so good. Mm. <laughs> it's really good. Mm -hmm. Granddad, you eat like I do. I, I usually eat with a spoon. Why do you eat with a spoon? Mm? Why do you eat with a spoon? I like it. You like it? I like um, having like a fork for like roast dinners. Mm -hmm. This is so homey and warm and delicious. Mm -hmm. Mom makes curry all the time. She does like her curry chicken. But you just, you don't ever know what you're doing. You just No, it's just, I just put it together. Yeah. Throw it together. But it's always, always good. Do you find that cooking calms you down? Relaxes you? No, just normal. Normal. Mm, just all of it. All of your cooking is pretty improvisational, right? You're not using recipes. Mm -hmm. Right. Were you always that way? Yeah. When I went to your place, there, see your kitchen, man. Mm. All those different seasonings you got on the table there. Let me, uh, how do you remember what to use? Right. <laughs> That's why I'm always like, okay, tell me exactly what you did, exactly what you used, how did you do it? Would you be able to tell me? Yeah, you fry your onions with the tomatoes. Yeah. After you boil your, your meat, get it soft. Oh, you boil it? Yeah, to get it soft. Okay. Then it's half cooked, then you put it in with the onions and the tomatoes mm -hmm. and a bit of oil. And then you put your seasoning inside and then you just cut and make it cool. So you actually cook the seasonings inside of the pot with the mm -hmm. onion and the, and the tomatoes? Yeah. Sure. Without Every, the meat? Everything working together, yes. Okay, okay. And then you put water on top of it? Do you use water or do you mm -hmm. not use any water? No, no, no. You take water from the meat and you boil the meat. Oh, you uh -huh. use that water? Mm -hmm. After you boil the meat, you don't throw the water, you keep the water. You keep the water. Mm -hmm. And you use all of that water or just half of it? No, you don't put too much water. Not too you much? You put just that you think you need. Yeah. If you need it, you add a bit after. But how high is your flame? How high is what? The flame. The fire. No, it's cook low flame. No, I don't like high fire. Oh, you don't like no. high fire? Mm, keep boiling over. <laughs> Granddad, you grew up in Georgetown, Guyana. Mm. And never been. And now we're here in London, where we came all the way. So when you go to Guyana? Uh, I don't know. We'll say 2019. 2019, I'll go to Guyana. Oh, wow. Would you like to come with me? Mm -mm. <laughs> Why not? Put down hold out. His knees will give up. He left one hold out. I understand that. Growing up in Guyana, what was that like? All right, as usual, you, you, you do what a boy would do. Which was? Uh, all, uh, whatever a boy would do, they do the same. Yeah. They go country in. Let's say boys will be boys. Boys will be boys. Mm -hmm. So whatever you do here, you do there. Mm -hmm. So it was kind of it was kind of similar to life here in England, or would you say it was a little bit harder or easier? Easier here. It's easier here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, in London. 
What was your first job? Do you remember? Mm, let's do it. So, I come here and started working buildings, decorating, painting and decorating. Wow. And then I get fed up with that and then I move over to cars, spring cars. Spring cars. Mm. So that was your profession? Mm, that's what I live with. Did you have your own shop or did you work for someone? No, I had my own shop. Mm. And how long did you do that? How long did you spray cars? About 20 years. 20 years? Mm -hmm. Wow. It's a long time. I think so, yeah. I think today we live in a generation where people are switching over careers, you know, every five years. Mm. So it's unusual today to hear someone's been working the same job for 20 years, 30 years. I mean, never liked it after a while. Mm -hmm. So after you did that, you retired? Mm -hmm. okay. Uh, 65 and that's the end of it. But now you're 87 years old mm -hmm. and you're still going. Mm -hmm. You're still going strong. Mm -hmm. Not too strong. Not too strong. <laughs> you're going there. But you're going. Mm -hmm. You're going. You know, you're you're my only living grandparent. Mm -hmm. That's a blessing. Yeah. Yeah. So mom, you grew up in Guyana as well. Mm -hmm. You were in a convent. Mm -hmm. What was that like? Being raised Fun. by nuns. Really? Mm -hmm. oh. I think as a child I had a very good childhood. It was just fun. And tell me about my grandmother who I've never met, Celia. No, she was alright. She was alright? <laughs> she when was more than alright. When, when did you first meet? Do you remember? No, I don't think that's fine. What would you say was her best quality? She, was, she loved to dance. She loved to dance. She used to call her the dancing master. Really? Mm -hmm. She used to dance. Who gave her that name? You did? Me? Mm -hmm. No. She used to open the dance floors and things. She used to open the floor and things. She'd be the, the first one on boy. the floor. Wow. Yeah, the dance great. master. She was great. Celia. Mm -hmm. Wow. Mom, what do you remember about your mom, Celia? She was a comedian. Mm. That's what I think. Very generous. Loving. Laid back. Very laid back. Yeah. But definitely she was a comedian. And for her... A comedian without realizing that she was a comedian. Really? Mm -hmm. the things she said, the way she said it, it was funny. Yeah. And for, for you and, and her, the best decision was to raise mom in the convent because she'll have the round-the-clock care and support mm -hmm. by the nuns. Yeah. Yeah. But then at 13, something happened, right? Yeah, what happened? I came to here. I came to London mm -hmm. at age 13. It was different. The cold, I didn't really feel the cold, but I just yearned for the sunshine mm -hmm. when I got here. Wow. The school I went to, believe it or not, it was the same. I went to a convent school, a Catholic school in Guyana. When I came here, it was the same order Catholic school. and. Without realizing there was a connection with the school there in Guyana and the school here. Mm -hmm. Because some of the nuns in Guyana would transfer to the school here in London. Oh. So, it wasn't much of a change as far as the education. Yeah. <laughs> made friends and to this day I'm still friendly with the people I made friends with. Yeah, you are. I've met a lot of your friends from... And, I'm, and some friends from Guyana too. We meet up in New York, I guess once a year. Like a little reunion. You know, they say you never lose your roots, which is true. You don't. Never lose your roots. But you meet more friends in New York than here? I made more friends in New York than yeah. I did here, yes. So you were 26 when you decided to move to New when York? When I went to New York. Yeah. I mean, what? I mean, I think I'm 25, or about to be 25 mm -hmm. in March. But I think, I mean, I'm really young, but I think, wow, to just get up and go to live in a different country and say, okay, I'm just, I'm ready to try something new. It takes a lot of courage. When you say? Mm -hmm. I didn't think so. You didn't think so? Mm -hmm. Well, a lot of cars, but you're right. Right? You pick up your whole life. Yeah, if you know you're coming to a new place, you don't know where you're going to meet. But I have no idea And then you come, you know, you've got to get a place to rent there and rent into black people. Mm -hmm. No Irish, no dogs. Mm -hmm. Oh, you, when you came here? Mm -hmm. So did you face a lot of racism when you first moved to yeah, London? Just, yeah, if you don't know, but you just, just shift it up. What was the most racist experience? Can you remember one? About, about 62, 63, mm -hmm. 1962. Down in Ladbroke Grove, we used to call it Notting Hill Gate then. 
Okay, the boy, though, they need a cock, cock run. Mm. Well, these people was bad, boy. They killed a man. Mm -hmm. Did you know him? No, I didn't know him. Didn't who, know. who killed him? Uh, just... Teddy boy, them. Oh. That was shortly after you arrived. The next year. The next year? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Wow. So did, did you ever go through a period? Mm-mm. <laughs> oh, really? Mm-hmm. Oh, well, you want to do that happen to you soon. And then it just, just fit off. So when they say, okay, you shouldn't have come. No, he was thinking maybe he shouldn't Maybe have you come. shouldn't have come, because mm -hmm. the same thing can happen to you. Mm-hmm. But you, you stayed. Yeah, I still. Tell boy, them used to come up to you and ask you for a light. They want to light the cigarette. I think you put your hand in your pocket, get on my mind, and just start putting them lips in you. Whoa. What do you call them? Teddy boys? Teddy boys. They used to, they used to wear pinker pickles, you know, those sharp, the shoes. With, with the points. points. Yeah. Yes, I love those. <laughs> we wear, I wear those now. I love They're them. back in fashion now. Yeah. What do you call it? I just call them loafers, but like with, there's a certain brand that I wear and they have that that arch, that point at the, uh, at the top. The original name is Winkle Pickles. No, these were the real skinny. So it's called what pickles? Winkle, 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 Winkle pickles. pickles. Winkle Pickles. You had a pair? No, I don't wear anything. I, I, I like white fitting shoes. I don't like no. No, but then Why shoes? back in those days, did mm -mm, you wear mm -mm, them? Mm -mm, no, I don't like them. No. My new material as usual. Mm -hmm. Being 87 years old, what's it like? I don't fight life, you know. I do that from young guys like you. I am well. <laughs> to fight life. What does that mean? You don't fight life? Yeah, don't get mixed up with it. I just take things that come. Mm -hmm. When you're young, you got a man to, like, to say yes or no. Mm -hmm. But you when you get a sort of you just take what comes. Mm -hmm. You don't fight life. What would you tell your younger self? If you had to give your younger self any advice, what would that be? Be careful, get money, and save your money. Be careful and save your money. And save your money. Yeah. A lot of people squander money. That's why there's been so much of trouble. These different cards, they got credit cards and all that. Mm. You don't want to get into them things, man. Mm. You know, but you, you never see a way if you get these credit cards because you're always living on these cards. Mm -hmm. You know you ain't got the money to buy what you want. But you know you could get it on your card. You're just gonna get it. You don't really want it, but you're just gonna get it because you, it's there. Mm -hmm. No, you know no good man. Never mind, my friend. So save your money. And better be careful. Day, better days would come. Save your money for many days. Mm -hmm. You know, we live in a time, and I, I'm guilty of this too, where because things are so accessible, mm -hmm. so immediately. You know you can just go to the store and get it, or you see someone else have it and you want it. You want it. But you don't really want it. You don't really want it. You don't think you really want it. You don't really want it. Mm -hmm. You just see it and you like it. Mm. But that's true. And you know you can get it, so you're going to get it. But you don't really want it. That's true. Because mm -hmm. there's several things I have at home right now that you I don't bought. Need, I have not yes, used you don't, it. You just yeah. want, it's just sitting there. Every car you had the thing to get it, you get it. Because you know it's there. What do you You don't want it. Yeah. Eventually, you're sorry you buy it. <laughs> but you can't take it back. We told me two months and years ago, I'm on it. Yeah. I once, I once bought a, the same blazer. Mm -hmm. It was about $200, and which is actually not super expensive for a blazer. But mm -hmm. I bought it, and I wore it, and then I returned it. And then I said, okay, I want to go buy it because I really wanted it. They give you a discount? They did give me a discount. Oh, that's good. Well, then I bought it again. <laughs> and then I realized... I wore it, and then I said, I really don't want this, and I gave it back, and when I went to return it, I told the guy, I actually said it didn't fit me too well, which it didn't, but it was so beautiful, and the guy told me, he said, you knew that when you bought it, you knew it didn't fit right, but I gave it back to him, and it just, it goes to show you that idea that we, we buy things that, you don't want, that we really, really want. don't want, where we could be doing something else with that, Correct. saving it. Correct, my friend. Yeah, you always tell me to save my money. Save, invest your money. Invest, invest. Granddad. Yes, sir. You know I wrote a cookbook. You know a cookbook? I wrote a cookbook. Yes, your daughter was telling me about it. Yeah, so it comes out next year. Yeah. This is the book. I'm going to show it to you. Wow. That's, yeah, this is it. That's nice, that's nice. This is it. Mm. So one of the recipes in this book is a berry cobbler with a cornmeal almond topping. So I made that for you, mm. for dessert. Mm, nice. Nice? You ready to try some? Yes, I'll try it. Okay.
You ready to try some more? Of course, tried. why not? Yeah. I tried a nice book, but thank you. Or not take it to me in this book. It took me two years. Oh yeah. This is actually not the real real copy. This uh, is just not, this is just yes. But two like years. Like a manual, yeah. Mm -hmm. Two years flew by quickly. I know. I know. From manuscript to recipe testing to photography to writing it. When you started. Wow. Two years, yeah. Who got started in like prawns? Yep, some prawns, some corn, more prawns, some sauce. Tidy up. Yes, my boy. Yeah, you, you made it. I made it. Yes. My granddad said I made it. Yeah, yes. I made it. And I, I don't call you by your name again. I started the chef. The chef, I know. He forgot my name. Mm. <laughs> More than one. You five got that? Five out of five. Five out of five. You know, wow. the other day, granddad, you said you give me a hundred out of a hundred. Mm -hmm. Now you say five out of five. Five out of hundred, you feel like five. Right. Fair enough. Same, same, ratio. same ratio. You like it? Mmm, it's all right. This is a very um, rich dessert, but it's actually very easy to make, which is why I like making it because it's just the berries with some sugar, some flour, a pinch of salt, cinnamon, and mm -hmm. lemon juice. Oh, lemon juice. Yeah, you just mix that together in a bowl. You pour it into the skillet, and then you mix together some cornmeal, almonds. You can use oats if you want. We use oats today. A little bit of butter, sugar, and just sprinkle that on top mm. and put it in the oven. It bakes for about 35 minutes. Well, I'm so grateful that you're in my life and that you allow me to come here and do this video with you and for eating all this delicious food. So cheers to everybody, to family, to love, to New Year. That's right. Yeah. Cheers. Cameraman. When you cannot speak, look straight ahead. Keep your